This is the second instructional video on the rigging load calculation form. By this point, you should have already downloaded a copy of the spreadsheet, filled out your master copy, and saved it. You should now be working with a copy of that. I won't go back through this particular slide again, but once again, this spreadsheet is free for all industry users. Now, in this particular example that we're gonna be working with, we're gonna be working with a 400 foot tall guide tower. In this location right here, we've put the date, the client name, the site name, so on and so forth. The crown block is gonna be located at 400 feet and a heel block is gonna be attached to the base of the tower. The project location, client information, etc., is listed to the left of the sheet. And again, remember all this critical information is gonna be transferred to all of the other applicable forms throughout. Note, the latitude and longitude can be put in in two different ways. One, you can break it up into degrees, minutes, and seconds, or you can put it in decimal format. If you put it as decimal format, put all the information in the degree cell because it's going to ignore the information that's in the minute and second cell. This information then is going to be transferred automatically onto the rigging page. Next, in the upper right corner, we're going to be putting in the load information. In this particular case, we're going to be picking up 750 pounds. We're going to have an additional 150 pounds for the ball and the additional rigging in addition to the weight of the rope and the friction in your box. We've also chosen, again, examples only. We've chosen a crown block and a heel block that each have 5,000 pound capacity, a lift hoist with 1,000 pound capacity, and a tag hoist with 770 pounds of capacity. Now, Again, we're gonna be using a type three lift. So we've gone to the type three page. Doesn't look like what we're gonna be working on. It's gonna be a guide tower. So we're gonna to wanna to go in and change to a guide tower. You have the ability on this particular page for the standoff to either be the angle of the load or the standoff distance at the load height. So we're going to want to change this to the distance. We need to change the location of the crown block to 400 feet and our load needs to be at 200 feet. Also, the standoff distance, once we change, is going to need to be 10 feet. So we've now changed to the correct location of our blocks. However, we only had a thousand pound capacity for our hoist. Our hoist is at 1165 pounds, so we've exceeded the capacity of the hoist. So let's first try moving our tag out. We're gonna move our tag out to 150 feet. In the process of doing so, we've reduced the load line from 1165 pounds to 1,117 pounds. However, that's still not quite enough to be within the capacity of our hoist. Also, because we moved our tag further out, we've reduced the load in our tag line from 142 pounds down to 97 pounds. So what can we do next? Let's try using two parts. And so we're gonna change up here from one part to two parts. When we do this, now our line pull has dropped to 587 pounds. So we're well within the capacity of our 1,000 pound hoist. You might note, however, in the process, our tag load actually went up. There's good mathematical reasons for that, but we won't go into that in this instructional video. Now, we've also reduced the load that's being applied to our structure at the crown block. It went from 2,234 pounds down to 1,756 pounds. Now, we're not gonna be leg mounting our crown block. We're gonna be face mounting. 
And that means, well, we don't want to be tying it to our bracing. We'll bend the bracing in almost all cases. So we're going to go to our block mount sheet. On the block mount sheet, the first thing that we're going to want to do is change the rigging type. And the reason for this, all this information here is coming from the particular rigging type that we've specified. So we're gonna change this to a type three. Once we do, you see that the heel block shows up and uh, all of the appropriate values being applied also show up. Now, in this particular case, we've got a 48 inch face guide tower. It's got three inch diameter legs at the level of the crown block. And so we're gonna change the face width to 48 inches and the leg size to three inches. And once we do that, we now see all of our forces. We see the included angles and the spreadsheet has told us that it is sufficient. For your records, if you need to on your heel block, we don't have a face width on the heel block in this particular case because we're at the very base of the tower. But it would be nice to know that the, that particular sling is sufficient. So if you'll simply put in a small dimension such as six inches for the face width, again, you will have chosen the particular sling that you're gonna be using and the sling arrangement that you're gonna be using, and it's gonna tell you that it's sufficient. And then you can produce a PDF of this to be a part of your overall record. So now we're gonna to go to the rigging plan page. All right, the first thing that we need to do on this page, again, we need to let the rigging plan know what the particular lift type is that we're using. So down about halfway on the page, we're gonna change again using one of the drop downs from a type two to a type three. With this change, the gross load, the type of the structure, the number of parts are automatically brought in. Here's the number of parts, the fact that it's a guide tower, here's our gross load. Further down on the sheet, the loads from the type three page are also imported and we'll see that in just a moment. Note that the cells with the peach color are input cells. With the amount of load, the spreadsheet has automatically made this a class three lift. This means now that a qualified person is gonna be required for this project. So we're gonna select a qualified person, Sam Houston. Oh, that's one of the examples, right? It's the only one in there. And so that's the one that I've chosen to show that all that other information impar uh, imported. Now, let's fill out the other parts of the spreadsheet. Ah, I forgot to mention that we're gonna be modifying this particular structure. We're gonna be replacing some structural members. Well, anytime that we change structural members, that automatically makes this a class four plan. And as a result, a qualified engineer needs to be brought into the project. And so again, we need to pick the qualified engineer. So again, the text has changed. And when we picked the engineer, the information came in. Now we need to provide the general scope of work, the project primary equipment, and the load lifting material and capacity information. Why do you want to do this? Well, amongst other things, it's a good idea to make sure that the equipment that the guys are going to need gets on the truck and it gets to the job site. And so we've provided a place, most of it in the form of check boxes and other, other places where you're gonna put in the capacities and that kind of thing right there on the form. All right, next we need to fill out the scope or description of the work, the general information, description of the work sequence and or the description of the reinforcing sequence. And I gotta point out, that all of these need to be covered with the crew before the work ever starts. Once completed, 
you can export each of these sheets to PDF format and save to the project file. And then, if it's a class four, for example, you can submit this to the engineer for his review and approval. We hope that you've found this instructional videos to be helpful. If you have questions or suggestions for future improvements, please email either myself at billgriswold at live.com or gl at esystemtraining.com. This completes this instructional video on a rigging example using the form.